Good evening. Welcome to worship on this eve of Lent 5 as we journey through Lent, as we celebrate the miracle of Easter that awaits us all, and as we continue to participate in the gift of daily dying and rising with Jesus through repentance and forgiveness of sins. If you're a guest or a visitor, please know that your presence is a gift to us, and we pray that our service of worship will be a blessing and a gift to you tonight as well. There's a few announcements that I want to highlight for you. Uh, first of all, midweek Lenten service, we have our fifth one this Tuesday, and uh, we'll be looking at redeeming love from the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 8 and following. Also, this Wednesday, men's Bible study, 11 a.m., and women's Bible study at 1 p.m. The women's study and the men's study will both be here at Oasis Church Fest. And then, it's hard to believe, but already a week from today, we'll be having the entrance of Holy Week, so we'll have some Palm Fronts for you next week, and it'll be the eve of Palm Sunday and the beginning of Passion or Holy Week with the Tridium, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and we'll see what God has planned. If you uh, read my 431, remember there's 50 days of Easter, so we'll have an Easter celebration on the church land, but uh, it may not be on the 17th, but it will definitely be an Easter celebration because every weekend we gather for worship is in fact the celebration of the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. I think those are the invites that I wanted you to be aware of as far as announcements. As you leave tonight, uh, Julie had received a Thrive and Action Team grant, so we printed up some invites that say celebrate the resurrection of the Lord, and on the back it talks about the Holy Week schedule and uh, your assignment, your mission, will be sometime in the 50 days of Easter to invite someone to come to worship with you so that you can share the good news with them in word and in deed. So before you leave tonight, I'll be back there, and we've got a pen, and we've got an invite card, and it doesn't matter how little you are or how big you are, um, age doesn't matter, God wants all of us to invite people to come and hear the good news of Jesus, okay? I invite you to rise then as you are able for your confession and forgiveness of sin. We worship as we live in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, I know the wrong I have done, and, and my, my sin, sin is, is always, always before me. me. I, I have, have broken, broken your laws, laws and done what is evil in your sight. Have mercy on me, according to your unfailing love. Wash away all my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a pure heart and renew a faithful spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us and has sent his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives us the power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. We sing together in the cross of Christ I glory.
and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praised be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercies and the God of all consolation. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways. And the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord for mercy to our God who is generous in forgiving. All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come receive bread and eat. Come without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Praise be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercies and the God of all consolation. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he has sent it into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Lenten song, If You But Trust in God. pray. Heavenly Father, you have drawn us through the waters of baptism and into your everlasting reign. Through Christ's life within us, guide us daily through death to sin and brokenness and into new life in grace and love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the hearing of God's word. The first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 43, beginning with verse 16. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise, they are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing, now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. 
For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people who I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 126. We will sing the church's one foundation, women with the first verse and men with the second. Our second lesson is from Philippians chapter 3, beginning with verse 4. Though I myself has re have reason for confidence in the flesh also, if anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise as we are able for our gospel verse. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus began to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard and let it out to tenants and went into another country for a long while. When the time came, he sent a servant to the tenant so that they would give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away empty-handed. And he sent another servant. But they also beat and treated him shamefully and sent him away empty-handed. And he sent a third. This one also they wounded and cast out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my beloved son. Perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they said to themselves, This is the heir. 
Let us kill him, so that the inheritance may be ours. And they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and destroy those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When they heard this, they said, surely not. But he looked directly at them and said, what then is this that is written? A stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces. And when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. The scribes and the Pharisees sought to lay hands on Jesus at that very hour, for they perceived that he had told this parable against them, but they feared the people. So they watched Jesus and sent spies who pretended to be sincere, that they might catch him in something. And he said, so as to deliver him up to the authority and jurisdiction of the governor. The gospel of our Lord is to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated. I posted uh, earlier the uh, children's message about pressing on, which follows our epistle reading from Philippians. So, what's the goal? What's the prize? What is the upward call of God in Christ Jesus? What is it? You know, when I was younger, I'd try to convince my mom, for example, to buy a certain kind of cereal because it had 3D football or baseball cards in it. But we had to purchase it. We had to do something to get something. It really wasn't a freebie in the true sense of the word. For Julie and I, with a dance marathon, we ended up coming in first place, so we got these trophies. Or there's the Olympics, where people go for gold or silver or bronze medals. So the question is pertinent and necessary. What's, what's the goal? What's the prize? What is the upward call of God in Christ Jesus for you, for me, for all the baptized children of God? St. Paul says, brothers and sisters, forgetting what lies behind, straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Edna Hong said that the upward ascent is actually a downward ascent. The way up journeys through land. The way up to what God has prepared for all of us is only through the death and resurrection of Jesus. And so we meet him at the foot of the cross. And we are covered with the flow of blood and water that comes from his most holy side. The goal, the prize. You know the answer to that question. It can be none other than Jesus Christ. Anything less than that will get us absolutely nothing. Jesus is everything. Now, some of you know that I occasionally watch uh, a show that my mother used to like, at Will of Fortune, and I was reading some notes this past week, and I was reminded when my wife and I watched an episode the other night, when, you know, you do that final spin, and if you get like $5,000, then they add another 1000 to it, you get 6000 and that, in a word, is a game changer, right? Because in this particular episode, there was a man uh, about six years ago named Sean, and he had hit one obstacle, one roadblock after another. Uh, he had half of a car that he had gotten on the wheel. He had $10,000 he'd gotten on the wheel. Uh, he was just buzzing along, and then he got a bankrupt. But with this final spin, whoever solved the puzzle was going to make it to the final round. So what does Sean do? Well, he ends up solving it with a couple of letters, and before you know it, the answer is given, and he's in the final round. And in the final round, it says person, and he calls out a letter. He gets like three consonants and a vowel, and lo and behold, the answer is future wife. 
And Pat Sajak, you know, the host, he's just kind of rolling his eyes. He can't believe what he's just seen. An illustration of what Paul is talking about in his letter, this epistle of joy to the Philippians. What do you do? What do we do when, when obstacles come our way? When, when things cross our paths that we don't like, that we don't want, that are heavy, burdens, etc. What do we do? We press on toward the goal, for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Paul says it's not the confidence of the flesh, it's the confidence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us the saving faith of Jesus, gives us the power, that dunamis, that dynamite, if you will, so that we can press on and press on and press on. We keep on keeping on. We don't call it quits. We don't throw in the towel because we know who's in charge. We know that God is sovereign and that he always makes a way for his people. He only wants the best for us. We press on. You know, they thought that they had shut Paul up. I mean, can you imagine trying to win a prize when you're in prison? I mean, here's Paul, and they're putting a muzzle on him. They're trying to lock him up, shut him off. He can't talk about Jesus anymore. And all of a sudden, Paul says, they gave me a megaphone. Now I'm able to tell all kinds of people, you can't believe the number of people that are coming to Jesus, Paul says. It's unbelievable. That's what God does. God presses on. God's not throwing in the towel. God's not giving up and calling it quits. That's why we're Easter people. Because of Jesus. Because of his death and his resurrection. Because he didn't stop when the devil tempted him. Remember, he was baptized and then the devil tempted him 40 days in the wilderness. You know that story. He didn't call it quits. He kept moving forward toward the cross. That's what God does because he loves you and me. He loves the world that he created so very, very much. Presses on. That's what God does. Now, what was Paul's motivation for all of this? I mean, what was the criteria? He'll play the game for a little bit. You saw it. You heard it. He'll say, that you want to talk about portfolio? You want to talk about bragging rights? You want to talk about who's got the best pedigree? And Paul will lay it all out there and say, how about this, how about this, how about this, how about this, how about this? Pretty impressive, huh? And then Paul will call a time out and he'll say, so how many points do I get for that? Not a speck. Not even a tenth of a percent. Nothing. You know the Bible. Your righteousness, your self-confidence, my righteousness, my self-confidence. It's nothing more than a pile of rags. Rags. But the righteousness of Jesus, that's what covers us. That's what clothes us. That's what gives us the power to press on for the goal, for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus to meet our Lord at the foot of the cross and to carry it, to be marked by it, to be sealed by that Holy Spirit and to live it out daily. Paul presses on. He says, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Paul says, all my credentials is a pile of dung. You know the word. I've taught it to you before. Some of you could probably yell it out right now. Scubala! Oh, I didn't hear that. Yeah, scubala! Scubala! It's a pile of dung. It's nothing more than a pile of manure. Everything we accumulate. Everything. That's all it is in the flesh. That's why Paul says you can't have confidence in the flesh. It has to be confidence in the Holy Spirit that gives us the saving faith of Jesus. That's what it's about. Confidence that God is sovereign and God is in control all the time. Completely confident. Uh, last Saturday, a week ago, we had fellowship time after 
we were in here worshiping. And right away, there were a couple of people chomping at the bit. They had to tell me. They had to share with me. We saw an amazing movie. You've got to see this movie. That, well, to step back just a second, I didn't get my Friday night movie night with my granddaughters, and so we ended up having a Sunday night movie instead. And the movie was the one that they just told me about less than 24 hours earlier. And it was the true to life story about Brandon. Brandon Brolesworth. The biggest story ever, probably, as far as a walk in, becoming a starter for the Arkansas Razorback. Biggest story in collegiate football with a walk on. Absolutely amazing. And I don't have to worry about a spoiler alert because the reality is you already know what happens to this young man when he's 23 years old. I mean, this is how the movie begins. But I found that it's not always bad to know a spoiler alert because if you know how something ends, like the third day, then it's much easier. It really is much easier because you start to really listen and you start to really watch and that's what I was doing. I was really listening, and I was really watching for the details and the unfolding of the story and, and how true to life. Probably, well, I would venture to guess one of the most true to life stories you're going to get. Uh, they, they were so particular about all the details, not wanting to embellish it, not wanting to make it Hollywood theater. If you haven't seen the movie, I encourage you to see it. Larry talked about this summer that will have one of our signature events for our 10-year anniversary, and it can be a movie night out there, and we can show it to people as well. Here it is in a nutshell. There's this young boy named Brendan, who is, I would say, a couch potato. <laughs> I mean, he's a little chubby, if I can use that word. And he likes his chips, and he likes his snacks. But he has a dream. A non-negotiable dream, a dream that he believes God has put in his heart, that he's going to play for the Razorbacks, the Arkansas Razorbacks. And then he's got a bunch of these other people in his life that say, well, maybe, perhaps, we'll see. Huh, not going to happen, you know? I mean, negativity, right? Even some of his coaches when he's little. But there's one coach that encourages him. And keep saying, hold on to that dream. And he does hold on to the dream. And he ends up um, becoming a starter. There's some marvelous scenes in there. And I just want to point out a couple for you. So that when you do see it, you're really watching and listening. Like his father, for example. Uh, Brandon is 17 years younger than his older brother. And his father is an alcoholic and has not seen his son. And lo and behold, what happens is that he finally gets to have a weekend, an overnight with his son. Don't blow it! Well, he does blow it. And he drinks. But in that scene with his father, Brandon learns that his father played the guitar. And they sing together, I'll fly away. It's beautiful, beautiful way to begin and end the movie. I'll fly away. Well, in high school, Brandon does a pretty decent job. And he ends up, he can get a, a free ride to like a state school to play football. But that's not his dream. He wants to play for the Razorbacks. And he's having kind of a tough time because he doesn't drink and he doesn't swear and people are always kind of teasing him. And I mean, the obstacles are kind of against him. But he, you know what he does? He presses on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, he has such a deep faith, a humble faith in Jesus. And then you see as the movie unfolds that the Bible study group is growing. 
And people are starting to take responsibility for their own mistakes rather than looking for scapegoats because they're learning from Brandon. And then his roommates, they kind of set him up on a blind date and they're going to play a trick on him, which is not very nice. They give him a couple of daiquiris because they're sweet tasting. He doesn't know they have alcohol in them. And he's really upset. It's raining out that night. And so here's his three roommates, his buddies, supposed to be his friends, that have done this to him. And he's upset. And he's running in the rain. You know why? He wants to get that alcohol out of his system. And eventually, two of the guys get out of the car, and eventually the driver does too. And if you don't know what that's called, that's called repentance. They realize that what they've done is wrong. And it's amazing because then Brandon ends up going to this coach for the Razorbacks, for example, when he plays for them. On his senior, it's the summer between the junior and senior year. And he says to the coach, I know what you're going to do. You're going to want to put all the new people on to give them playing time because they weren't ranked or anything. And Brandon said, don't do that, coach. This is going to be the best team you've ever had. And he works with them all summer. They get a special housing place. He gets them up early because the theme that he, he lives by, that he's been taught by the coaches is, first one there, last one that leaves. First to arrive, last to leave. He presses on. He presses on. He presses on, but not the confidence of the flesh. Oh, yeah, he's getting in shape. He's doing his part. Don't get me wrong. But it's the confidence of the Holy Spirit at work in his life that's moving him. And then... This is a beautiful scene in the movie where they play number ranked one, Tennessee. And they've got the game in the bag. But life happens. Scubala happens. The quarterback stumbles over Brandon's foot and he fumbles it. But the quarterback, if you've watched him from the beginning to the end, he takes responsibility. He said, I'm the one that fumbled the ball. I own this. You see? I mean, it's a beautiful illustration, this storyline of what's happening there. And all the time that this story is unfolding, here's his 17-year-old brother that's 17 years older than him, and he's sitting there with the field out there where Brandon has played all of his high school games, and they're waiting for the funeral to start. And they're delivering plants out there. And there's this guy that's whittling away at a piece of wood. Whittling away! Because it's the wiles of the devil, my friend. It's what Peter calls that prowling lion that, that's out to devour someone. But as that scene comes to a close, Brandon's older brother, he stands up and for the first time he sees what all these flowering plants say, trust God. We, uh, it's we trust, yeah. We trust. We trust. Brandon was killed in a car accident 11 days after he signed. Uh, when, no, before he signed, but after he was chosen in the third round by the Indianapolis Colts to play professional football. It's an amazing story, my friends. It's well worth watching. It's what Paul is trying to proclaim to us tonight. We don't call it quits. We don't throw in the towel. We know who's in charge. We press on toward the goal for the prize, the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And that's what St. Luke is getting at. In chapter 9 of St. Luke, Jesus sets his eyes toward Jerusalem like a flint. There is no turning back. It's the cross. And it's in Luke chapter 13 that Jesus says, you go and tell that fox Herod that today and tomorrow I perform cures. I cast out demons. I preach good news to the poor. And on the third day I finish my course. And what about that barren fig tree that's in the vineyard? The gardener says what? 
forgive. Let me put some aeration and fertilizer on it. One more year. You can always cut it down. Book 15, lost people matter to God. They better matter to us. I don't want somebody missing from heaven. And then Luke 20, our gospel for tonight. What are you going to do when you come back for some fruit? And the servants you sent are mistreated, mistreated, mistreated. The owner of the vineyard says, I've got another move. I'll send my son. Perhaps, maybe, they'll respect my son. And they kill him. They put him to death. And Jesus says, so what do you think is going to happen? Justice or mercy? I think it's a quote that he has there. Because justice would say they're going to get what they deserve. There has to be hell to pay. And then Jesus quotes Psalm 118. The rejected stone has become the cornerstone. So what do you think? What do you think? If God keeps pressing on, does he still have another move to make? Huh? That's why we're here. Because God has another move to make. The cross. The promise of the third day. It's the season of Lent. We're journeying with Jesus at the foot of the cross with the promise of the third day. Press on for the goal, for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those who are mature be like-minded, Paul said. Press on. For in the words of Jesus our Lord, Repent and be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to rise as you are able. Alas, I did my Savior bleed. Go ahead.
congregation may be seated. I remind you that we don't pass the offering plates, but there are many ways that you support not only Emmanuel, but the holy work of God in daily life. And I give you thanks for doing that in the name of Jesus and for the saving work that brings the lost to be found and the unsaved to be saved. We will continue then with our closing prayers. For the church, the world, and our poor sinful selves, let us pray to our Lord, who is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord Jesus, let your church count everything as loss, compared to the surpassing worth of knowing you as Savior. Fill it with the longing to make you known to every sinner in the world until you truly are the all in all for all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Strengthen this congregation in faithful worship, loving fellowship, generous outreach, and holy living. Make this place a place of refreshment and refuge for souls battered by sin, sorrow and suffering lord in your mercy hear our prayer give peace justice health and safety to every nation especially our own grant wisdom and integrity to all who have been entrusted with authority and power especially our elected and appointed leaders teach us to love one another through deeds of mercy and words of understanding lord in your mercy hear our prayer so many people hunger for healing and thirst for reconciliation. They long for encouragement and seek understanding. They desire forgiveness, comfort, faith, and hope. Refresh them in the wilderness of their suffering, dear Lord, especially those we lift before you now. The gracious Father, we pray for your healing presence for Amy Cooper, for Sheldon Bieri, for Travis Rush, Travis Roth, for Lindsay, oh, for his family, and for her especially. And we pray for Dale, and we pray, Lord, for Pam and for Katie. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. We pray for Melody, for Julie, for Natalie, for Leroy and Margaret. And we pray, Lord, also for Steve Larson and his wife, Gina. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us, dear Lord, and answer our prayers according to your will, to your glory, and for the benefit of the people you long to save. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We rise as we are able for our benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing together the old rugged cross.
is Jesus the prize is Christ your Lord. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Don't forget I have a pen and an invite card for you as you leave.